15 things I wish I knew before playing Surviving Mars. Let's start off. Number 15. Make a Paradox account. As you get the Paradox Interactive sponsor to choose from, which will make the game much more fun if you've been playing it for a while. Reason why is because in the late game you won't get any breakthroughs. More than you can acquire with certain wonder buildings and map specific breakthroughs. With the Paradox Interactive sponsor, you can. Number 14. There are resources all over the map, and you can spot them too. So if you are out of metal or polymer, just check around the map and let your RC transport get them. You can click on the resource to collect, or you can set up an automatic route, and it will gather all the resources you've selected and drop them off where you've selected. Another great tip would be to get the Rover Command AI research under robotics which will grant you the ability to set these vehicles in fully automatic mode. So then the transporter will gather resources on its own all across the map, which is awesome. It will also give you the ability to set the RC Explorer on automatic mode, which will scan any anomalies automatically. And if you don't know what these are, they appear all around the map and will give you breakthrough attack, research bonuses and situations which will end up with you benefiting most of the time. Number 13. Domes come in all different shapes and sizes. But the most important thing to understand is that they cost different amount of resources to build and then to maintain. Now nothing comes easy, but metal is a lot easier than polymer to acquire when you're just starting off. So you'd best start with something small and easy to maintain. And don't worry about the amount of room with the small domes because... Number 12. Dome tunnels are awesome. They connect domes, electricity, oxygen and water. Basically everything you need to survive. But also give settlers access to the facilities of the other domes. Now it will always take up one hexagon of space in each connecting dome. So you'll end up having that corner basically everywhere. But you'll need smaller buildings anyway. And mid-game, you'll have access to smaller homes too. Or you could fit that space with a garden, which will grant comfort. Number 11. You'll need a lot of drones to do all types of labor all around your colony. The further you are in the game, the more you'll need. Of course, you could buy them from Earth, but money isn't easy to acquire either. So you want a drone assembler, which is locked with research too. But once you have it, it'll cost one electronic to have one drone, which you can unpack at the drone hubs. There's also research to make that one electronic convert to one metal, making it even easier to make drones. Number 10. Martian copyrights and Martian patents are good ways to make money if you need it. You basically outsource your own research to Earth for a while. And in return, you'll get 500 million or 1 billion. Since you'll need those rare metals for your own production. Now the more you'll do this, the more research they'll cost. But by the time it isn't worth it anymore, you'll probably have a functioning colony. Number 9. These sterling generators are nice to have, as they provide 10 power. But something I didn't notice until very late was the fact that you can open these up and have it produce 20 instead. Just make sure to close them in the event of a dust storm, as they will require maintenance pretty much instant when that happens and if you keep them open during it. You can set these up in domes too if you want. Number 8. Get rid of these hydro farms when you have the research available for normal farms. You'll be much more efficient with the normal farms, and they'll require less people for the same amount of space taken in dome. They'll also consume less water, as per tower, you can hit nearly one water consumption, and one farm is about two. Number 7. You can flatten the area if there's not much space or a lot of mountains. You can also make ramps if you're on a higher area. Of course, there's a limit to how high this would be possible, but you can always try it out. And if not, fear not, because... Number 6. You can also make tunnels. These will connect water and power to somewhere else, a long distance away. So you can build another dome somewhere completely different without the instant need for power and water. It's also a gateway for your transports or other vehicles. 
Number 5. Shuttle hubs are basically flying drones. They'll relocate resources to a place in need. But you have to have a depot ready, because they won't transport anything if there isn't a receiving depot. You can make up to 12 of these with the proper research, and place as much hubs as you want. They'll fly across the map too, but keep in mind that you'll pretty much lose them for the time being, as they don't fly very fast. So maybe it isn't sufficient to have them fly across the whole map for that one metal you'll need to build something. Number 4. Asteroids can carry resources and anomalies sometimes. So if you're sure there aren't any more resources left on the map, and you check back a while later, there's probably more. This is why I welcome asteroid storms most of the time. Although it can be quite a problem if they'll hit your base for two souls. Number 3. As with domes, power structures require maintenance too. And probably the hardest to acquire in the beginning would be machine parts and electronics. So don't go wild with the wind turbines, as you'll probably go broke pretty fast. I would suggest going for the large solar panels, as they'll only require one metal for maintenance. You can even place these in dome, if your map is plagued by dust storms, as they will continue to operate in that way. For the nights, you can set up batteries or even atomic accumulators after the proper research. These charge up during the day and release energy during the night, but the more you build, the less they'll charge. So keep a good charge slash build balance, because a dust storm can wreck your power supply via batteries, as they won't recharge during dust storms, unless you set them in domes like I mentioned. Number 2. Now late game, the issue of water can be solved with moisture vaporizers. Just place them like this and out of each other's reach. Upgrade them and place a lot of them. Thank me later. If you want, you can place buildings in between them as well, to optimize space. For example, the fuel refineries. Number 1. Skip dust storms and cold waves for your first playthrough, as they will only frustrate you in the beginning. If you understand the game enough, soon you'll be in for a challenge. And that is the right time to dial up the difficulty. This also counts for the random event. Don't choose a hard challenge at first. Just do some of the easy ones first and dial it up on another playthrough. Hopefully that helped. Let me know if you have any good tips in the comment section below. And for now, have a fantastic day.